Section 33, inverse trigonometric functions. So this section is all about taking the derivative of inverse trig functions. Inverse trig functions look like this guy right here. Let's talk about some misconceptions first. Uh, first thing is that <clears throat> this thing is an inverse trig function, and this thing is an inverse trig function, and they mean exactly the same thing. I've heard from people coming through my class that some teachers say they're different things and change the domains on them and stuff, but no, they're exactly the same. As far as we deal with them, if you see arc signs, like down here on the table, arc signs, sine negative one, same derivatives, because they're exactly the same thing. Okay, misconception number two is that sine negative one of x means the inverse sine of x, not sine of x to the negative one power. Sine of x to the negative one power is cosecant of x. Remember, 1 over sine is cosecant. So, I mean, that, that's kind of brutal because uh, sine squared is sine of x squared. So when we go to negative exponents of these things, we can't just throw the guy up here like we do with positive exponents. Why this happened, I wish I knew more. It's confusing. I apologize. Okay, now on to our guys. This is the table of all these. Um, one nice thing to note is that sine and cosine are different only by a negative sign. Tangent and cotangent are different only by a negative sign. And secant and cosecant are different only by a negative sign. So you only really need to memorize three things, secant, tangent, sine. And then you just throw a negative for the co whatever. Uh, so we're going to prove how to actually solve for the derivative of these things for just one of the problems, just for sine. And this is what the proof looks like. So we have some sort of function. I'm going to do the base, most basic inverse trig function is y is equal to the inverse sine of x. All right. Uh, first step is to sine both sides. It gets rid of the inverse sign, so I get sine of y is equal to x. Remember, inverse trig functions just give us angles. We plug in a ratio of the sides, and we get angles. And when you do this, it's kind of more obvious that this is the angle. It's what we plug into sine functions, and here is our ratio of the sides. So I'm going to write this as a ratio, like x over 1. And now I'm going to make a triangle, because I'm going to need the triangle in a bit. Here's my triangle. Here's angle y. I just picked one of the ones that wasn't the right angle in my right triangle here. Uh, OK, and then ratio of the sides, this is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is this guy, so that's x, and the hypotenuse is 1. Now. We don't have a need for this yet, so I'm going to go back to my problem. I'm going to take the derivative. The derivative of sine of y is cosine of y times the derivative of the inside dy dx. And the derivative of x is 1. That was pretty easy. Uh, OK. And then I divide cosine y over because I want to solve for dy dx. I want to solve for the derivative. And I get that dy dx equals 1 over cosine y. But we don't want the answer in terms of y although this is the answer, uh, we want it in terms of x. So we have to go back and figure out what cosine of y is. And to do that, we use this table. Because cosine of y is just adjacent over hypotenuse in this table. So I just need to find the adjacent side here. So I'll call it a for giggles. Uh, so I do a squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. That side, that side, that side. All right. Uh, I need to solve for a, so I subtract x squared over. a squared equals 1 minus x squared. Uh, square root both sides. I get that a equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. But it's a side of a triangle, so I don't really care about the plus or minus thing. It's a distance, so I just, I'm just going to use the plus 1. So a is just 1 minus x squared. And remember, our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so our adjacent side is 1 minus x squared square rooted. And our hypotenuse is 1. So the answer is just for the cosine of y, which is what this is equal to. 
is just root 1 minus x squared. So the derivative is just 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Which, if we look back at our table, oh, 1 minus u squared, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's how these are proven in, in all of these cases. You're going to undo the side. So if we had y equals, whoops, y equals the inverse cotangent, cotangent. We would just cotangent both sides, and this would be what you're solving. And we could do that, and we could set up a triangle and write the ratio of the sides. The ratio of sides here would be 1, so we'd have x and 1 on our sides. And we could solve that problem. But uh, I'm not going to go through it. Uh, but we do need to know how to solve these problems. So down here we have a more complicated example, so I wanted to start off with a easier example. So one where we take the derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of cotangent of 5x over 3. That seems like a good one. So I'm taking the derivative of this. All right. The derivative of, co oh, inverse cotangent. Whoops. Let's actually make this a problem from our section. Uh, so the derivative of inverse cotangent, I go to my table and I go, uh, it's that guy. So I just do negative. Okay, du. du is the derivative of the inside. So u is, is 5x over 3, and du would be 5 over 3. So we just uh, it's just negative 5 thirds on top. Over, and cotangent, I just need to do 1 plus u squared. So 1 plus 5x over 3 squared. That, that's it. That's the answer. So these are pretty easy to do with derivatives. You've got to take into account the chain rule. That's what this part was. I could have just said the answer is negative 1 over 1 plus 5x over 3 squared times the chain rule, the derivative of the inside, 5 thirds. And that would have been fine too. So yeah, just take into account chain rule. Now we're going to go look at an integral style problem here that's a little bit more involved. So this problem is the most difficult iteration. And the hint above says, warning, this problem involves completing the square. Uh, it involves completing the square because we want to morph this bottom into something that looks like this with a 1 plus something squared. Or a, no, 